How's everyone doing? Good. Good? Okay. Um, I kept this little uh, snippet about this session intentionally broad um, just to see who would actually show up, and it looks like a lot of people showed up, so that's fun. Um, we are going to talk about voice, but I'm going to stretch your minds and imaginations quite a bit, hopefully, uh, to talk a little bit about how voice uh, interacts with the broader spectrum of emerging technology today. So um, quite obviously and specifically, you guys are sitting in and out of panels that are talking quite a bit about uh, machine learning and the evolution of natural language processing to natural language generation and how machine learning plays a big role in that. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about something a little bit more unexpected, I think, in that conversation with regard to, um, let's go back to 2016, uh, a little bit of um, Internet of Things and connected technology, and as well as, let's go to 2017, uh, augmented reality, right? Um, so you're not going to spend a ton of time on that, but I do want to um, dissect a little bit of how I think voice uh, can be impactful in those realms. Um, but specifically, I'm um, going to end on a few things that I'm really excited about and, and we're really excited about at, at my agency, which I promise not to, not to bore you too much with, with the details on. Um, bigger picture, I want everyone to leave here feeling inspired to create something truly special. And if that's with voice specifically as a, as a platform, amazing. Uh, if it's not, that's cool too. That's cool too, but I think voice could certainly play a big role in it. So ISL, iStrategy Labs, we're a digital agency based down in DC. We've got a few folks in New York. Uh, we were acquired two years ago by WPP. Uh, we had this founding thesis 10.5 years ago uh, that modern marketing uh, blends platforms and mediums like never before, specifically because the human experience spans online and offline like never before. The interesting thing is that we were literally saying this almost verbatim um, 10.5 years ago before anything that I just mentioned in my intro was even close to existing. Um, not to say that we were overly prescient or to pat myself on the back too much for that, um, but it, this is the kind of thing that everyone is saying now, um, which is just, it's fascinating to see how this evolves. Uh, I, we are like 10 minutes late and only have like 16 minutes now, so I'm gonna skip all of the, all of the upfront. We work with lots of big brands, we won some cool awards. Uh, the one thing I did wanna say about how we think about the world as a digital agency or a modern digital agency uh, is that we have a hardware workshop and a maker studio with mechanical, uh, mechanical and electrical engineers and industrial designers who are fabricating our own props for shoots for content that we're making or building our own connected devices for, for prototypes uh, to s inspire creative campaigns or, or thinking in a few different ways. Um, we get to do stuff like this, like buy school buses and pop out the windows with transparent LCD screens to transport kids to Mars. Uh, this is for a massive installation uh, down in, in DC, um, pulling um, 3D graphics from uh, the same studio that produced the movie The Martian. Uh, in these transparent LCD screens, there's a laser guide underneath the bus, so wherever the bus driver is driving around or going over a speed bump, the kids are transported relationally to that Martian landscape. Um, I, the reason I wanted to hone in on this and, and tie it to voice eventually, um, this was two and a half years ago. This is sort of peak VR, if you will, like right at the plateau when VR, like AR, was starting to enter the conversation and we're starting to get to this like, do I really want to put this headset on? And that's a whole nother conversation. There, there, I do think there is some relevance there, but sort of at peak VR, and we wanted to create an experience uh, that was immersive, as buzzy as that word is, um, without the need to put headsets on 30 kids in a school bus. Um, we had a betting pool for how many kids would cry or vomit. Uh, I did not win that bet. Um, I, the only, this is the only other project I wanted to show you guys. Um, so this was a, we, we built this sort of 15 by 15 interactive escape room. I don't know if you guys have done an escape room, but it had, um, we sort of, I, I can't oversell this room. Um, it's really just, it was RFID little sensors in the bottom of these little pillars that sort of self-guided folks around um, the experience instead of, the, if you've done an escape room, instead of the voice of God sort of dictating it. So it was triggering um, these different little video vignettes and interstitials to, to kick off the next physical challenge. It was all about you know, Dell EMC products. Um, what's interesting is in our concepting, uh, we got so excited about building voice into this experience, but we had like 10 weeks to pull this off, so it didn't, didn't quite come, uh, come to fruition. But um, this was very much, we can stretch and call it, um, you know, connected technology, right? Even though, again, just simple RFIDs, but um, this is the kind of thing as, as a creative agency and a digital agency, voice is starting to work its way into our, into our discussions quite rapidly. Um, kind of got obsessed with this, um, this notion of enchanted objects that literally turned into a, a book that someone uh, put out about six years ago, and, and uh, we sort of turned this into 
Um, something we call social machines is the one trademark we got excited about throwing out into the world. And then someone also wrote a book called Social Machines. Damn it. Um, <laughs> So this was predicate. This was sort of peak um, peak Foursquare back at the time, and we got we're, sort of we're into Foursquare. You know, this is like seven years ago. We're like, okay, but but then what? Like, is getting a you know dollar off at a Starbucks like really that interesting? Um, what if you know a Foursquare check-in, and then ultimately that became um, engagement on Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and anything that has an API that we can actually work with? Um, what if it could trigger something in physical space, right? So this is that was sort of the last four years of our thinking. Um, and I'll spare you all the examples, but um, in the, again, in the last year, it's become, you know, how can voice, uh, as the most technology that is hidden behind the scenes in the Steve Jobsian context, um, how, can, how can voice interact with the physical world around us? Um, so, that, you know, building something like a social cooler that started with um, volume of mentions on Twitter or Facebook, pulling, listening for, you know, X number of hashtags to then, you know, trigger the cooler to magically open up. Um, then we sort of started to think post social media, if you will, um, and then it just became RFID. You know, if if um, or excuse me, Bluetooth low energy. If um, you know, ten people were surrounding this thing within three feet, then the cooler would magically open up. Uh, and again, now we're super excited about how voice uh, plays a role in this. And then again, as a digital agency, it's just crazy that you know sort of stopped talking about desktop and mobile and, and stopped, you know, for building a website, we stopped, you know, saying that we would build it responsibly. It was just sort of inherent, you know, as of three, four years ago. And then now all of a sudden, um, some of the updates coming to literally just in the last year and, and then the new Amazon announcements on um, Echo Show and the new framework um, with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, it's just another, it's another display. It's another screen that we can, you know, use voice as a means to trigger content. The real um, aha moment for me, I never use that phrase, aha moment, sorry about that. Um, the real moment that I got super excited about voice, we, we built this little internal project um, out of fake news. We built this um, little arcade unit where it's just this little Tinder, Tinder style swiping in that pulls from headlines and you guess real or fake. Um, we put it out at a bar in DC and we shot this little video and like submitted for a Webby just as like a fun internal project. Um, it got decent attention and traction uh, and then sort of somewhat on a whim, uh, we just whipped it up into a little Alexa scale um, and it got so much more engagement and attention and, and even me just honestly sitting around the office, like I just found so much more joy and ease of use. And this was sort of one of the moments for me where I was like, holy shit, there's something here. This was like 11 months ago, I wanna say. Um, so we started to write more and more about all things voice. Um, we did, I didn't know this until like a month afterwards, but um, so sort of like how did, no, how did no one done this yet? Um, we, we built the first, little messenger bot for the Capitals and Wizards down in DC. And we actually cranked out the first Alexa skill for a professional sports team. Now I think 65% of, of teams actually have them. Um, and then we actually are on a, a, a lot of sections of reference banking. Uh, we actually are working with Capital One on, I mentioned the updates to the Echo Show. Um, so we just kicked off the project to update this Echo Show skill in the new framework. Okay, so voice in a complex emerging technology landscape. Um, so I would argue, and hopefully this is also a bit of a break for a hyper focus on voice, again, to talk about a little bit what's, what's happening in the rest of the emerging technology landscape. Um, I would argue to create a compelling voice experience, I think it's critical to understand and look at what's going on everywhere else. So this is maybe a somewhat boring statistic at this point, or maybe it's not even impressive anymore, but um, almost doubling the number of billions with B connected devices that are gonna be sitting and floating around the world connected to the internet and drawing spectrum, 80 billion by 2025, that's a, a Gartner statistic. Um, and then with the, the pending wave of 5G connectivity coming in the next year and a half, uh, and then Google and Facebook in a race to create uh, synchronous solar, solar powered drones that are um, transcribing the, the world providing connectivity for all. So these are some of the things that um, I'm just from a, a feasibility and accessibility standpoint, I think we're, we're on the cusp of something major. Um, so let's talk about IoT. And I, I sort of half joked about, you know, let's take ourselves back to 2016. Um, and this is, I think, one of the reasons why um, voice is, the time for voice is, is nigh and is now. Um, IoT overload, I don't know if you guys have seen the sort of spectrum. There's a Japanese word called chindogu. That's the art of useless objects. Um, there's just this, this whole like litany of failed products, but you know, do we really need a smart bookmark that tells us what page we're on? Do we really need a bottle opener uh, that tells our friends every time we open a beer? Yes, yes we do. Uh, this got just absolutely lambasted. This was um, Stephen Colbert's like penultimate episode uh, in, his, in his old show about four years ago, three and a half years ago. 
Um, it's a smart, I'm sorry, I don't have a high-res image of it. Uh, it's a smart cup that tells, tells you what you're drinking, right? Do we really need that? Uh, or a hairbrush that tells you how many strokes that you've taken every time you brush your hair. Uh, it's insane. Or a spoon that tells you what you're eating. Uh, I still don't understand why it would be slotted, but who, they just like really, really went for it. Um, okay, so let's take a look at unexpected building blocks to help think about voice in a new way, an inspiring way. How many of you guys are familiar with if this, then that? Okay, like half, half the room. Um, so many of you will know that this itself is an inspirational technology that is sort of representative of software development and, and basic coding in, in its truest form. Um, but this for us has inspired um, so many means of concepting something truly simple, truly useful, truly functional. If you do this, then you do that. Even some of the uh, introductory examples that I was giving, if 10 people are standing around the, the beer cooler, then it will open up. Um, the basic building blocks, I've really seen BeagleBone out there for a while. Raspberry Pi is a sort of um, well-known and somewhat ubiquitous at this point, and there's 15 different versions of Arduinos, but uh, microcontrollers specifically, and then just this emerging spectrum of smaller and smaller chips. Um, this is one, the light blue bean, light blue bean that we've used a few times, uh, has an accelerometer and a gyroscope, a lot of the you know, foundational technology that's in our smartphones, but in super small chips that you can throw into um, wearables or, or anything else. Um, so this is one that we whipped up into this little device you clip into your shoe, click your heels three times, and it triggers a call to your phone to get you out of a bad date or a conversation. Um, this is not Google Glass. It is a better looking version of it, I would, I would say, that Intel is about to come out with. Uh, and then is anybody, does anyone shop on SparkFun? Like three, okay, cool, no one ever raises their hand. Um, this is inspirational for, for me and for us just in terms of how cost-effective basic building blocks and components and sensors specifically, it's a, it's a sensor store and a warehouse. Um, a lot of the stuff that we've done and prototyped, um, we've done for $200, even if with a little bit of movie magic and polish, you, know, you, can, make, you can turn it into a, a higher fidelity prototype or even a campaign. So this is something we prototyped for um, the NBA since they just rolled out the um, jersey sponsorships for the first time. So you see the logos and the the top corner of a jersey. Um, so just a little pressure sensor purchased on SparkFun for I think $5.99. A lot of stadiums are rolling out synchronized wristbands. So when the athlete at moment of excitement pounds their chest, then it syncs the wristbands in the entire stadium. Um, so then starting to, oh, thank you. All right, there we go. Um, starting to, I should end there because we're almost out of time and I just got, a, just got applause. Um, but starting to look at, at voice and sound and audio and decibel reading as a layer to not just um, interact with the audience, but also to collect data in a non-invasive way uh, is super exciting. I'm gonna skip through some Amazon Dash stuff and some Swedish smart buttons in the, in the interest of time. Uh, but then you start to, to look at the um, onslaught and the, the lows and the targets and the big box stores of the world with autonomous uh, robotics that are uh, laden with voice technology. Um, a few branded examples that I thought were interesting, still broadly in the connected device category and then starting to um, see how voice might play a role here. Anyone see this? It was the, it's literally called the red light, Budweiser red light, or Bud Light red light. Um, so it's mostly in Canada, so I'm not totally shocked that no one, no one raised their hands. Um, you connect it to your Wi-Fi, you mount it on your desk or uh, in the den or wherever you want in your house, you indicate who your favorite uh, NHL hockey team is. Then whenever they net a goal in real life, the siren goes off. The crazy part about this, if you think about it, um, this actually retailed for $30 Canadian, so Budweiser actually got paid to have a branded object in your home. Um, this was a, a prototype that went through many iterations, so we worked on one version of this sort of in the, the like five-person R&D team at Anheuser-Busch. Um, these are literally just light sensors, right? Um, again, on SparkFun, I think like 99, 99 cents each. Um, so it's literally just measuring ambient fridge temperature, and then the light sensor is telling you how many beers you have left in your fridge. Again, just a proof of concept, right? Um, and then also syncing with Drizzly and Instacart for automatic reordering. But this now turned into uh, a branded smart fridge that Bud Light rolled out, half as a, as a, a content marketing grab, land grab, if you will, for in media, uh, and half as a you know, R&D turning into possible re revenue generating line item. Um, the interesting thing here is early, still early discussions, but um, there is talk on how voice may, may interact uh, in 
some semi-obvious context there, um, but we'll see if they actually move forward with that. Um, Netflix, I love some of their examples of what they've done, again, on the R&D side. I don't know if anyone saw the Switch. It was also known as the Netflix and chill button. Uh, with one touch of the button, you integrate it with you know, X, Y, and Z in your, your emerging smart home. Um, turn down the lights, order Seamless or Caviar or whatever it is, uh, automatically turn on Netflix. The cool part about what they're doing is that if you go to makeit.netflix.com, they have like five or six of these little internal projects and experiments, and they're all just these little DIY instructional kits that will show you how to do this yourself. Um, also, I wanted to show this one because they're also in um, how do we bring voice into the conversation internal discussions. Um, my favorite one that they did around the holidays last year, uh, socks that are measuring your pulse, and if you fall asleep while you're watching a show, it'll automatically pause. <laughs> Again, go back, half the room raised their hand, and we, we were talking about if this, then that, right? Like, you guys understand the basic notion of, like, of, connect, of creating your own recipes in, in that lingo, um, but if you do this, then this happens, right? It's not really that complicated. Coca-Cola has done like 17 different versions of a um, hacked vending machine. The simplest one, um, was literally just a hug, just a little motion sensor, or sorry, pressure sensors built into each side. If you, you know, put your hands here, you give it a hug, dispenses a Coca-Cola. Um, this is out in Belgium. Some lightweight facial recognition looking for a yawn, so a little, little yawn detection to make it sound fancier. Uh, it's at an airport, only at late at night. If you yawn in front of it, dispenses a free cup of coffee. Um, this was for the Game of Thrones launch down in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, this was actually sort of one of our, one of our favorite recipes of the um, if you know, a million hashtags are executed and shared across Twitter in this example, then the statue of King Joffrey was, was toppled. And it was all live stream. This was kind of this, this weird, weird event. Um, and then one of my favorites, this is a alarm clock where if you hit snooze, then it'll automatically donate money to the political party that you do not support. <laughs> so it'll, internal motivation there. Um, and then lots of just really incredible stuff. This came out of MIT, um, turning any flat surface into a capacitive touch interface. Um, bring your own graphics and design, but sort of a smart ceiling mounted projector. Um, I think they're retailing for like nine grand, so not that expensive or kind of expensive depending on what you actually want to do with it. Um, but vertically orienting for, I think this place, um, again, for this is just glass, right? Um, Nike's starting to roll this out in a retail context. So um, this is where I just see so much opportunity for voice to play a role in this, um, just from a store navigation and item location and then triggering the associated content with a specific shoe. Um, so to me, voice is just, an, it's another means to access information. I mean, that's what, that's why the sort of the overlap between like something like chatbots uh, with machine learning, but uh, chatbots and voice, it's essentially the same thing. I, I unfortunately haven't been able to um, attend too many sessions, but like two, uh, two of the three that I've heard of the last day and a half, I've, I've heard a couple people say that. Um, gesture tracking and motion sensing gadgets that are you know, built as rings or wristbands. Um, in my mind, um, it's turning people into superheroes, right? And there's the cool things that are, you know, get, turn yourself into a Jedi or, or whatever it is with lightsabers or, or you know, control objects around you. Um, and I, I truly think it, with the spectrum of emerging technology, voice, I do think, is in pole position to um, be the ultimate purveyor of, of turning us all into superheroes and giving us superpowers. Um, I'm going to blast through mixed reality because we're almost out of time. Um, I'm imagining that most people are familiar with you know, some of the more um, interesting examples of like AR kit specifically or AR core for Android. Um, I mean, one of my favorites is, is the you know, quite simple utility of being able to trigger a measurement. Um, this was a you know, solo uh, designer out in Amsterdam that is not a real Tesla Model 3. Uh, this is augmented reality, so you can see what it looks like in your driveway. Cool enough, you can you know, get a model off of the internet and drop it in. It's not that complicated, but taking it the next step to you know, figure out a lightweight, um, lightweight interactivity to change the color or the wheelbase or whatever, whatever it is to sort of do everything but test drive the automobile. Um, dare I use the phrase disruptive, but that's where some of this starts to actually impact um, what we can do. Um, this is something we were just playing around with um, for one of our clients, Sam Adams. They have these brew pubs in a few airports, so something like a secret menu. I wish in and out was one of our clients because it would be a little bit more relevant for them, um, but a, sort of an AR secret menu that only popped up. I, I mean, obviously, this is sort of the um, ep epitome of sort of a gimmick or a, or a stunt, but um, I mean, we're, we're able to do this in, oh, that's fun, in like half a day of prototyping. Um, Google's project Tango that just turned into Tango. This you know, came out of the box with some, some uh, Android devices. They did a little partnership with Target. This was um, 
two Christmases ago to you know let kids run around and transform a target into a winter wonderland. The cool thing about this is it helps you you know map the entire footprint and floor plan of a target. Uh, Magic Leap, I'm assuming most people know about. Um, they're sort of in, in pole position to be one of the um, leaders in true augmented reality. By true augmented reality, I mean like shit that really makes you think you're in a Disney movie. Um, they're snatching up engineers left, right, and center. They have Shaq wearing their little spec glasses, which is interesting. Um, but if you think about how voice will eventually uh, ultimately become ubiquitous as a means to access information, trigger content, or unlock an experience, as silly as we may look with some of these glasses until we get ocular implants, if anybody wants that. I don't know if you do or don't. Um, I think this, this is gonna quite simply transform the way we, we learn, the way we create, the way we communicate with each other. I think for me, and I, before agency life, I, I did some work in um, educational technology. Um, I think for me, just the, um, the impact on you know, education for K through 12 especially is one of the more fascinating means of, of what this is gonna be able to do and create and even you know, inspiring our kids to um, get out and, and play actively even using relatively simple graphics and, and technology is one of the more interesting things. Um, again, so how I see voice impacting um, some of this some of this stuff, it's just accessing information as quickly as humanly possible. That's all it is, but being able to understand it, it's just, this is the, uh, the quickest way that we can get to matrix, matrix, matrix cartridges into our, into our brain to upgrade ourselves. Um, then just letting your imagination actually run wild and create things like never before, just using voice as a simple means to um, trigger graphics in front of you if it is AR. And then I promise this is like three things. Um, yes, I know uh, this was like a January announcement, but whether it's, it's Google or um, Amazon continues to continuing to lead with Echo with regard to video content triggered by voice. Um, and then I know there's been a few, a few startups here and a few people working on sort of privacy first solutions. And I, I mentioned sort of the, um, the DIY aspect of this and being able to you know, create your own voice assistants and prototypes. And I, I think one of the interesting things here is you know, creating your own physical object, like build your own little personal gadget that you know, is, is truly yours. Um, I don't know if SNPs made it here to voice conference, but um, they're in Brooklyn and Paris, and they're one of the, they've gotten some decent, decent traction and attention, um, one of the folks working on sort of a privacy, privacy by design, privacy first solution uh, for building your own voice assistants. Um, and then duplex, obviously, is, is another thing that I, I can't wait to see that ultimately roll out. And a few things that we're working on, just to, I sort of laid the groundwork for you know, how we think about um, you know, brand campaigns or, or how the um, physical and, and um, digital worlds can sort of play with each other. Um, in this context, you know, using things like a secret word or a magic word or a passcode to you know, unlock a door or magically open a door. Um, or for more, perhaps a, you know, a, safety, a safety play, um, instead of the clerk at a convenience store trying to hit the 911 emergency button, it, you know, it went from went from hand under the counter to you know a foot controlled thing because their hands would be up presumably. Um, why not just a, a passphrase that does not start? Sorry if anyone's at Alexa, but uh, does not start with uh, Alexa or Hey Google, but starts with just the magic phrase. No problem, man. I'm I'm heading for the cash register right now, and just as long as you have to account for false positives, just don't say that otherwise. But um, you know, why, why not? Like we're not that far away from that becoming a thing that could actually work. Um, so lastly, I would leave you with some closing thought and inspiration. Uh, aim to create experiences that you truly believe will eventually become ubiquitous. Uh, and a specific example is one I just gave. If you think that we can live in a world where um, a clerk at 7-Eleven held at gunpoint um, does not need to hit a physical button to call for help, uh, go F and create it, because someone has to. That's it. Thank you.